and welcome to Ann's Sleep. My name is Tommy Licatese. I have the pleasure of hosting pain management specialist, Dr. Yuel Alexis. Today, we will be discussing anesthesia and sleep. Welcome to the show, Dr. Alexis. Oh, thank you for having me. So for a patient who's undergoing surgery, okay. what are some of the sleep-related questions that an anesthesiologist might ask? Oh, these are gonna be big questions. I mean, the, the key thing I wanna check is if a patient has obstructive sleep apnea, I wanna assess if they have severe asthma, COPD, emphysema, whatever it's gonna be, but especially obstructive sleep apnea. As an anesthesiologist myself, we are supposed to be experts of the airway. So we have to manage this. We have to manage the exchange of gases and oxygen that comes in and out of the patient. Uh, so we need to know it well. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just look at the patient. And you can start to see signs that are common for patients that have obstructive sleep apnea. Such as? Such as a wide girth in their neck. Or if you start to see some subcutaneous tissue that starts to build up here. Um, you want to take a look into their mouth. You're going to ask them to open their mouth. And that's why we always ask this question. Ah, how wide can you open up your mouth? What is your dentition? How big is your tongue? What is the malum potty score? To really try to assess the level of obstruction that may arise in a person's breathing while you are caring for them with anesthesia. So essentially you're assessing risk. For sure, this is, this, is a, this is a major, it's major. And unfortunately the problem is most patients do not even know they have it. They don't even know that there's this higher level of risk mm -hmm. that's already inherent in the procedure. So why is it so important to know if a patient has sleep apnea before undergoing anesthesia? Well, sure. So. There's different types of anesthesia, you know, so one could be twilight anesthesia where we're kind of using more of a propofol IV based medication to relax the person. They're breathing on their own with this. Then we have someone that goes under general anesthesia. Under general anesthesia, we have to help. We have to intervene for this patient. We have to put a tube that passes the exchange from the outside into their lungs. It's almost safer that way because now we secure the airway. The problem with this route is at some point we have to extubate, take that tube out. Now, if the patient's just had surgery, the patient's been under medications that have, one, blocked their reflexes to make motions, have paralyzed them, ha have them completely unconscious. Such as the reflexes that would allow them to breathe? Correct. I'm assuming? <laughs> Correct. So now we have to restore all those things, take the tube out, and hope everything goes okay. Um, and you can imagine who's someone who just had a big abdominal surgery and everything's open. They don't, they cannot breathe so 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 it poses many challenges and i can talk about how we take care of that post-operatively but yeah. even more in the um even with the twilight anesthesia it's even more dangerous actually and that's because more they're not common. intubated they're not intubated now their airway is not secure now you provide them a medication that relaxes their airways or basically excessively it's basically causing them severe obstructive apnea is what we're doing. We're providing medication that relaxes everything. Subconsciously, we relax. We block their reflexes again. All their muscles relax. So what do you recommend for patients with sleep apnea that are undergoing anesthesia? Well, one, they need to know. If they don't know, then how are they going to inform the doctor properly? Right. Hopefully the doctor will be diligent, <laughs> you know? Um, the first thing is just being aware. Um, fortunately, a lot of people have sleep apnea. We're already aware of these type of things. We take care of it anyways. But the doctor should let the, the patient know so he can get it sought out. And he, they, they should see a sleep doctor, very simply put. Um, because obstructive sleep apnea not only poses problems in the acute postoperative phase, but also chronically for a patient's whole life. Um, and things add up and compound themselves. So they need to be addressed as soon as possible. Somebody who does have sleep apnea, what's to be expected when they come out of anesthesia, when they do uh, awaken? They're still anesthetized. They're still just waking up. And the paralysis that we gave them is just reversing. So they need to take a big breath of air to expand their lungs is the problem. So right now their lungs are not even fully explained. We need them to expand it. Um, so we have to use the CPAP machine to provide a little bit of a motivation for them to expand their lungs, take a big breath of air, oxygen to flow into the brain for them to start thinking and waking up. Okay. What, what, other, um, what other recommendations do you have besides the CPAP? Well, um, you know, depending on the severity of the nature 
Um, if a patient uses a oral appliance, bring your oral appliance. It depends on what you actually need at home. Typically what we're trying to do is restore whatever you require at home is what you're going to need postoperatively. Okay, and I'm sure you've seen your fair share of sleep apnea patients uh, <laughs> during, definitely, during definitely, your days in the definitely. OR. And, um, you know, can you tell us a, a personal story or something that you've seen? For me, I mean, just a week ago, I saw this nice gentleman in his mid-50s coming for a simple procedure. He's about six foot two, 200 pounds, weight appropriate, provide him anesthesia, nice and simple, thinking this could be a good case. He made me work for it. I had to constantly <laughs> stimulate him keep him awake, keep him more awake than he probably wanted to be for the procedure. Um, but safety first, it, it, you know, it, 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 it's not easy and it's difficult. Um, so I have to use a lot more techniques that are going to be more, more painful, to tell you the truth, to keep the patient awake, um, to make sure that they breathe appropriately. So it's really important to know these things ahead of time. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's what it is. We want to prevent issues. We don't want to have to react to issues because they just don't work as well. All right, great. Well, thank you for coming on to the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and that completes this episode of Anne Sleep, a whole you social talk show series with Dr. Alexis. We encourage you to explore the rest of the episodes and visit wholeyou.com to learn more about sleep breathing disorder treatments. The sleep professionals in this video series teamed up with Whole U to spread healthy sleep education across America and were paid for their appearances.